Hey everybody and welcome to the channel and welcome to my review of the Zero FX. I've had the Zero FX on loan from English Electric Motor Co for about two, three weeks as it turns out. Uh, and it's just been for me to use it in my daily and produce a few videos and give a review at the end. Now before I get into talking specifically about this bike, there is a few things I want to cover. Uh, the FX, the FXS and the FXE are all very, very similar bikes. The FXE and the FXS are indeed supermoto styles. This is the enduro version. Of all of these bikes, there is a full powered version and an 11 kilowatt version available, depending on what country you're in. Uh, the 11 kilowatt versions are CBT legal. And for this one, which as I say is the full powered version, you're gonna need an A2 license. However, the actual performance between the 11 kilowatt bikes and the full powered bikes is so small. I mean, I, I went straight from 11 kilowatt FXE to this, and maybe it's got a little bit more grunt just in the middle there, but it's it's hard to tell. It's, it's not as big as a difference it looks on paper. Now, as I've said throughout all the videos when I review electrics, I'm reviewing this for an item that exists. I'm reviewing it for what it is and not for what it isn't. I don't want to get into all of the debates in the review about electric bikes, their pros and cons, all of that. So let's just say here that yes, this is an electric bike and I have discussed electric bikes at significant length on different videos talking about every single aspect there is to compare between internal combustion and electric, pretty much. So let's just put that aside. We can accept that this is an electric bike and it exists. Uh, we'll have to also do that for the price because this bike is nearly 13 grand. Uh, that is expensive if you make a comparison to internal combustion engine bikes. However, if you make a comparison to electric bikes, it's not the end of the world and it sits about the place it probably should although we would like it to be cheaper. What I mean by that is the 125cc equivalents that cost four or five thousand pounds, those are very, very sluggish and slow. I mean, they're not sluggish and slow in the sense that they're completely unusable, they're just a lot slower. They're more like a 125 or even more like maybe 100cc, something like that. However, this is a lot more expensive, but it's got the build quality of a big bike, and it's also got the speed of about 400cc. 0 to 65 ish seconds, something like that, depending on what your charge is at the time. Top speed is only around 85 ish, uh, but that's kind of limited. And electric bikes aren't for flat out speed, and certainly not this sort of bike. And then when you go above this in the electric market, you're talking things like the Zero SRF and SRS, and then you're going up to 20 something thousand pounds. So this is actually priced about where it is in the range performance and build wise. We will get out on the road in just a second, don't worry, but there's so much emotional baggage that comes along with electric bikes that people want to just fill the comments with. I want to try and address that and get out of the way before I go out and concentrate on the feel of what this bike actually is, what this thing is like to ride. Zero has obviously had some controversy aimed their way uh, over recent months by many different people to do with their practices with their cipher system. Now, if you're not aware of what this is, Go in to look into it. But basically, it's microtransactions on bikes to unlock extra features and things on those bikes. I've made my opinion completely clear on this side of things. Uh, I think, you know, electrics currently are having an uphill battle and zero doing that is really just throwing a boulder in their own path. So you must be aware of that. However, to my understanding, nothing on this bike is related to that system. So there is no microtransactions to unlock any of this. In fact, the only thing I've seen available with this bike is the quick charger. And the quick charger is actually a separate unit piece of equipment, which you buy and you get. So it's not like something that came on the bike that you pay to unlock. So this bike is not involved in that whole system, though obviously zero is. And there's my opinion on it. So we can also have the comments not filled with that argument. Um, but yeah, in short, they shouldn't be doing that. Right, let me just show you the controls and the features of the bike. And then we're going to get out on the road and experience it. So the FX is set up with a 21 inch front wheel, a 20 inch rear wheel. We have ABS front and back. Also the ABS system on the rear of this off-road is actually all right. It doesn't lock, stop, lock, stop, lock, stop. It's actually pretty good that you can lean on that rear brake and it will just come to a nice halt. If you, if you really stamp on it, you can get a little bit of it, but it wasn't as um, pronounced as I noticed on the FXE. Not that that was bad, but again, that's, that's a road orientated machine. Front brakes on this, I will say now, are incredibly powerful for the size of the brakes that they are. That rotor is not huge, but I have been massively impressed by how powerful 
those brakes are with that size front wheel with me on it. I'm like 6'4", you know, so I'm not a small person on top of this bike and those brakes stop it. The battery pack is in the middle here. This is the 7.2. Of course, looks are in the eye of the beholder, but I actually think that this looks quite cool. It's different. You know, it's very angular. It stands out. It looks like an electric. Um, and for that reason, I like it. Obviously, your motor is in the middle here. And as I say, that is the same between the FXE, the FXS, the, uh, the FX itself. And they are the same power. It's just how it's digitally tuned as to what you get. Uh, this uses a pulley on the front and a belt here and a massive pulley on the rear. One of the benefits of belts is they're very quiet. They last about something like 20, 30,000 miles and they don't need so many adjustments. Okay, so we just turned it on here. Controls, we've got the uh, high beam, low beam pass light. Your high beam, low beam switch is here. Your hazards is here. We've got the indicator and the horn. Oh, it's a cute little one. Kill switch, mode button to choose between eco, custom and sport. Of course, the Eco gives you less torque, more miles. The Sport gives you lots of performance. And the Custom, you can get uh, the app on your mobile phone, connect to the bike, and tell it to give you as much or as little power torque as you want, and uh, how much regen braking and regen on the motor you get in return. So you can really customize it to make it feel as you want. If you want to know more about that, watch my video on the FXE from a few weeks ago, where I show how it basically has different modes, and you can make it like anything that you want as i say any sort of engine it can be more like a, an inline four it can be more like a, a single cylinder since the fxs that i rode before the fx has got the updated screen the same as what's on the srs and srf uh, and that is a very nice screen and gives you all the information that you need and it can be customized using the app again so now the question of course we've covered all those other things is what is the range of the fx like zero's claims are anywhere between 91 miles for the city and 40 miles for a motorway at 70 miles an hour flat out. Now, obviously, motorway miles, 70 mile an hour, the faster you go, the more energy you use. If you reduce that down to 55 rather than 70, then you're gonna get a lot more miles back. Electrics aren't good for top speed. However, for acceleration, for lightness, and for handling, they're bloody great. Of course, those are the claimed figures by Zero. What have I experienced on this bike? Well, what I can tell you is this. In one day, I went from home up to the top of Butzer Hill, which is one of the tallest hills around here. I did a lot of green laning. I then rode back through a couple of different villages. I then got back home. I'd covered 36, 37 miles. In that, I had gone up at least 800, 900 feet in elevation once or twice because I went from top, to the bottom to, from top to bottom a couple of times. And when I got home, I still had about 35% of my battery remaining, which would have meant that I could probably get, well, again, it depends on how I'm riding at the time. If I was in the town or city, then I might get an extra 20, 30 miles out of that. If I'm going to, you know, blast it up a motorway, well, then I'm maybe only going to get 10 or 15 or something. You know, it's, it's tricky to know ergonomics i'm six foot four and i have no problems with this you know because of the shape of the tank my knees aren't in the way anywhere you could be significantly taller than me and still be comfortable on this um oh the only thing about that though is the bump in the seat it's got a little raised second section for the pillion seat part for me i'm right up against it if you are much taller than me you probably want to sit where it is so you might need to refoam the seat or see if a different seat's available but it's it's not a complex thing and you could actually do that yourself for not a lot of money oh probably shouldn't have done that should have held back otherwise i'm gonna have to go through these corners really slowly the handling on this thing even these intermediate tires is absolutely fantastic you know without a motor giving you vibrations and stuff you get all feedback through the tires and through the brakes and they've actually resurfaced this then it's so smooth there's nothing going on there. But then we're gonna move here to the next, and now instantly I can feel, I can feel the grittiness of the surface of the road, and then it goes smooth again, whereas on that little section, without the interference, you know, with the background noise of the vibrations of a, of a petrol motor, and all of that comes with that, you really get to have a different riding experience where you, you pay attention more to the road than the bike, and more to the tires, because you can feel and hear when they're losing grip. I say the brakes are absolutely great on this thing. <laughs> it's 
just, it's just too good. It just feels, it's, I have a DRZ 400 SM Supermoto, okay? This feels so much lighter, so much more agile and nimble. Quicker, in fact, I mean, it's a 440cc and it weighs about the same as this, but this just goes. The second you want the extra speed, it goes. At any point in the corner, extra, it goes. I feel like I can be larier and ride this bike maybe better than the FXE, even with this 21 inch front wheel. And I've always been sort of, you know, a fan of supermotos and stick to 17s. The 21 is for off road and it's great at that. And I have taken this bike green laning in two videos on my channel one in a rainstorm, one not. And it's like cheating. It's different to my petrol DR, yes. But when you lose something with that, you gain something with the electric. It's not all loss when you get away from petrol, unless that's your opinion and we can't change that. And I'm not trying to, and I'm also want to make it clear here, I'm not trying to make you go and buy an electric. Don't, if you don't want one. I really, that's not my place. It's not what I'm trying to do. I don't try and sell bikes. I try to give my experience of them. And if people have got the money to do it and like the sound of that experience, they may then do it. But I don't benefit from that directly. I just get to ride the bikes. I wish I benefited from it directly because as it turns out I sold a couple of Eva Rebellies. And to those people I hope you're enjoying your Eva Rebelli. Jesus, my, my god. A clear road? What could be better? See, one of the things about not having gears in the clutch, because you don't have any of that in the way, you just think about the corner. You look at the line, you feel the grip, apply as much throttle or as little as you need. You can use the brakes without feeling like they're gonna lock off at any point and then just gun it. It's, it's easy. It's, you know, you don't need nearly the amount of skill to go quickly on one of these as you do on a petrol. Now, of course, these things are not completely unique to this bike. All electrics are like this, but the, the ease of use of this bike for just getting around town, uh, you know, just jumping straight on it, not worrying about warming it up or anything like that. Just get on the bike and go. Being able to plug it in in the garage, because uh, this charge is using a, a three pin plug, but I've been using the slow charging. So it's up to about nine or 10 hours to charge it. The quick charger does it quite a lot faster than that. But for me, it's been fine. And yeah, waking up every single morning with a full charge, not needing to go to a petrol station or anything like that, is, it's fantastic. And of course, let's not forget the cost of petrol right now. Uh, £2.2 two a litre I was paying for e, uh, E5, because that's what my bikes prefer. Just look at <laughs> It's just silly. You just play around with it. You feel more like you're riding a BMX. It's just all that weight is is low enough down that you don't feel it. I mean, it's a 130 kilo bike. It's not entirely light. And the one behind me, let's show you these brakes from 40. I have made many videos on this bike, testing all sorts of different aspects, and you can see me out having huge amounts of fun on this thing. But I mean, just just. <laughs> I am grinning like a child. Gonna see if I've got my breakpoint judgments better. Almost. As I've said before, that is one of the things you have to get used to is the fact that you're not coming down through the gears, you're just on the brakes. Oh man, this thing is fun. Like, I get it, for most people watching this, you'll be like, it's, no, it's 13 grand spicy. I, I couldn't even consider that. That's not a toy. That's, that's an, a, lush, a luxury expense. And yeah, okay, it is. Look at it that way. But as I've said, there are plenty of people out there who can afford these. They will sell them, so people will buy them. And they'll get to have this much fun, presumably, if they're like me. I am, I am gutted that this is going back. There is a pigeon having a bath in the Ford. If we go round, maybe we won't disturb him and we will be able to view the pigeon from above. Nature. Ah, oh, we just missed him. Now how close would I have got on a petrol bike? 
So I'm not going to try and argue this bike as some sort of logical replacement for a commuter or anything like that. It is what it is. It is a 13 grand electric dirt bike with a, let's just say, a 60 mile average range with normal riding conditions, 60 miles. And it is amazing. I love it so much. And as I said in my recent video to want the FXS versus the FXE and the FX itself, I actually think that if I was given the option, if Zero said to me, Spicy, here you go, man. Choose one of these from the FX, the FXE and the FXS. I'd choose the FX, even with the 21-inch front wheel. You know, there's a lot of people that say that a bike like this is completely rubbish and it will have nothing to do with the, the performance or the ability of the machine. It will be completely down to the price and their inability to pay for it. And I can't afford it either, so I'm not being some elitist there and going, well, just, you know, just get richer, poor person. I, I, I earn around minimum wage a year, you know, doing this. This bike costs around the same mark. I couldn't afford this bike. As I say, the biggest shame of all this is the more people don't get the opportunity to just try, just, just try one of these bikes out or an electric. Um, props to English Electric. They do do demo days where you can go out and just try one. You know, there isn't a huge pressure that, you know, you, well, I hope you're going to buy it sort of thing, um, from my understanding. They want people to experience electric. And, you know, for, for their own good, they need people to get to experience it because before people experience things they they make a lot of assumptions and they blah 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 you know this is how these arguments come around a lot of them and then you get on one and it's like wow that's great different for all people of course but i implore you even if you hate electrics just go and try one of the demo days now you're not gonna get infected by the electric <laughs> it's not like the government's gonna go ah you're on electric you can't have petrol anymore i think that pretty much covers all that I wish to cover. It's amazing fun. It is all the other things that I've already said, but ultimately it's just a bloody good laugh. And I'm going to be really sad when it goes back in just a couple of days time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it interesting or useful, smash that like button. Big thanks to English Electric Motorco, as I say, for lending me the bikes. Uh, and also a huge, huge thanks to my patrons who make this channel possible in the first place by supporting it for as little as a dollar a month. I say a dollar because that's the way it's shown, but it's actually around a pound and you get charged in pounds and people, I didn't realise this, people were like, but, 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 but I can't pay in dollars. You're not paying a dollar, you're paying a pound. But yeah, that is how this channel is possible. That is how I do this as a full-time job and give honest videos like this. Obviously, without question, it is risky for me to talk about like the cipher system that Zero's come up with and show my disapproval of it in a video where a company has lent me a Zero. I have done this with other bikes in the past or at least been critical of them and it would seem that I can't ride those bikes anymore. And I wasn't very critical of them, it seemed rather mildly critical. And that's why my patron's there because if you are completely honest about things, if you do give fair reviews, you find yourself not doing them anymore. It's a real shame. Um, I want to try and change the industry. I want to change the way things are done that people don't, you know, metaphorically suck off these companies. They just give an honest review to the people, abide by all the advertising standards agency rules, and just be honest with people. That's what I've always wanted, and that's what Patreon allows me to do. So if you want to get on board, see videos early, help me with all that, please do. Links in the description. I will most likely have a video or two on this bike before it goes back because I'm going to be riding it because I have it for a couple more days and I wanted to get the review done and dust it out of the way and then I might have some more fun on it. And then after that, I've got a couple of days to uh, rest and I've got two petrol bikes coming of a similar style, which you are all going to love. Oh no, watch out. <laughs> Until the next one. Bye-bye. Whee!